So I'm going to be talking about WordPress today, and I was tasked with talking about WordPress for designers and developers, which at first I was like, sure, I'll go for it. And then when I started planning it out, it was kind of like, oh, I see, because like, those are two completely different things. And I've got to pe appeal to both of you guys here. Um, so how many designers are here? Designers, hands? OK, developers. Neither. Oh, awesome. Cool. Um, so I think it's pretty evenly split up then. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, start off by talking a little, about my, a little bit about myself. Um, I was, I guess, I've been doing this for 12 years now, not WordPress specific, but designing and developing websites. Um, I was born in Maine, grew up in Washington, which I've got this awesome picture of. Did it? Hold on. Let's try that. There we go. Um, so yeah, there. I grew up right about there. Um, and I kind of started developing websites, yeah, 12 years ago up there. Came down to Austin in, I believe, 08 and lived there for eight months. And then came over to Houston here, where we are. Um, and I think that is where my remote's not working. Um, so I work for uh, Primer Gray here. Um, started the company with a couple of good friends of mine in 2009. Um, and we do, I guess, 80% of our work is web, and we're a marketing agency. The rest, 20%, is design, um, print, and branding, identity, all that. Um, so 75% of that 80% that we do in web is on WordPress. Um, some of the other ones we use are Magento, Drupal, Joomla, and all that fun stuff. Let's get past that. So what is WordPress? Who here has used WordPress before? Almost everyone? Awesome. Um, who uses WordPress more than any other content management system? About the same number of people. Cool. Um, so why, could I ask a couple of you why you use WordPress over Drupal or over Joomla or something like that? Anyone want to? Awesome. Ben? That is the same opinion I've got there, both of you guys. Um, so what is WordPress here? Um, WordPress is an open source content management system, and you guys will have the awesome opportunity tomorrow to hear Matt Mullenweg, the founder of WordPress, uh, speak alongside Dries, who spoke the keynote this morning, um, and they're actually talking about, I believe, open source and community and development, and uh, I'm sure they'll hit on design a little bit as well during that talk. Um, so that's what WordPress is, for those of you that don't know. A content management system, if you don't know what that is, is basically a way of updating your website and changing the content um, without having to go into the code and edit pretty much just code out everything, which takes a really long time, as Dries was mentioning this morning, with um, Notepad and all that. And the remote is still not working. Um, so on top of that, WordPress is also really community-oriented. They have a great um, forum, a great support system. All of that is really excellent in there. Um, and on top of that, I think WordPress creates a better internet for everyone. And we'll get into the facts in the next slide here about who uses WordPress and how many people are using WordPress. But I think they really drove through, kind of pushed good design and user experience and all that. I'm trying to rush through this for y'all because it's a little boring if you've already know WordPress. Um, so here's some WordPress history. It was founded in 2003 by Matt Mullenweg and Mike Little. 
Um, it was started primarily as a blogging platform and has since evolved into a full-blown content management system and it kind of really depends on how you use it. You can use it any way that you want, really. Um, so here's some, after that in 2005, uh, the theming system was introduced, which was a big change for WordPress. It kind of pushed out the um, kind of community aspect a lot more than it had been previously in the sense that you could then design themes and kind of build your own website and just completely customizable at that point. And on top of that, it really pushed the community side. Uh, let's see. And it's still showing that. Okay, version 3.2 was the most recent version. It was released in Ju July 2011. Okay, and here's some WordPress facts here for you. WordPress is used by 14.7% of Alexa's top 1 million websites, which is an astounding amount. And as of August 2011, all the new websites being built, out of them, 22% are being built on WordPress. And then there's some of their top, I guess, clients or users. Um, New York Times has most of their stuff on WordPress. CNN has most of their stuff on WordPress, as well as Wired. Um, some other users, I guess, with big names would be like the Livestrong campaign. Red Hot Chili Peppers actually use WordPress to power their website. Perez Hilton, if you're into that whole thing. Um, TED Talks are powered on WordPress. And most importantly is I Can Has Cheeseburger. You guys are familiar with that one? They throw a great party at South by Southwest. You guys hit that up next year. Um, CBS New York, uh, National Football League does all their blogs on WordPress. So that's all the fun, boring stuff there about what WordPress is, which I think most of you already know. So we're going to move on to designing for WordPress. So who has designed something that ended up being built on WordPress? So, and that's, I think, most of the designers here. Um, so do you guys, is that your, does it change the way you design at all, building on WordPress? Do you think about it differently? Do you, I guess, approach it differently? No? No one? No? Okay. So how many of you have heard this phrase referring to design, something looks WordPressy or alternatively template-y? Most of you heard that, probably, maybe. Um, so what do you think that's a reference to? Why do you think, I guess, people refer to something as WordPressy or template-y or kind of any of those terms that would imply that it's designed, I guess, for one content management system, which really does not apply to design at all? It's more on the program side. Does anyone? All right, Boxy and kind of grid-like kind of deal. Cool, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you just stole my next point. <laughs> there we go. So just because a, a, a website, so it's really hard, first of all, to talk about designing for WordPress, I guess, because Designing, as far as I'm concerned, designing a website is designing a website. It doesn't matter if it's on WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, Magento, TypePad, whatever other content management systems are out there that you might be using. I don't think that really changes the way you approach a design project. Um, however, there's a lot of people that kind of think that it might, if it's on WordPress, it needs to look a certain way. And that's where that WordPressy term comes into play. Um, so I think the term was really used initially. The first time I heard it, it was just, to me, it was a reference to clean and simple design. Kind of a really well, I guess it's really grid-like, which gets boring, but a really well kind of separated design with a lot of straight lines, a lot of kind of just really divided. Um, however, that doesn't mean that you have to build a WordPress site like that or design it like that. Um, uh, at Primer Gray, the company that I work for, we've done single page websites that are all powered through kind of scrolling in and out on there. And those still use WordPress. We've built websites that just don't even have a navigation, oddly enough, that are built on WordPress. 
and all that. So I think it's really important that you don't get stuck to kind of like that WordPressy feel as a designer. And then we'll take a look at, so here's the uh, default theme currently for WordPress. Uh, it's called 2011. And we can see at the top there, it's got the name, which would ideally be a logo, as well as an image, and then your navigation bar. And down here, which you can't really see because it kind of cut it off, yeah, is like archives, and then it goes into categories and all that. So I think that's kind of the definition to me of designing something that looks WordPressy. WordPressy. The 2011 theme, and a lot of sites, it turns out, end up using this. So we look at this right now, and if you just pay attention to that real quick, you see everything there. And then we go to this other website here called Co Coworking, which is really, it looks a little different, but if you look at it, it's the same exact thing minus that image up top. It's got the logo in the top left hand, the search bar, I'm assuming is what that says in the top right. Um, and then your navigation below that. Um, and I think that kind of really, like, this is one of the featured websites on WordPress.org, I believe, is where this all came from. And that really, I think, it's a well-designed website, but it follows that same exact form as the other one. I think that's where that term wordpress or template really comes from. I think my goal here is to point out that it doesn't have to look like that. Um, so we're going to move on to one that looks nothing like those two which is this one right here, Little Sketchers. This is built on WordPress and looks absolutely nothing like that. It doesn't have the same structure. It doesn't even have really anything but a couple forms on the home page. I think that's kind of something that's important when designing for WordPress is that you don't get tied into what you've seen previously and what you associate a content management system with. Kind of breaking the mold type thing. Another big site on WordPress is the Arcade Fire website. Um, which kind of shares that same kind of grid-like layout, but at the same time, it doesn't look like something you'd find if you were trying to install a pre-built theme on WordPress. Okay, and then the other thing is for you designer folk, don't use a design, a pre-designed theme for your personal website, your portfolio, all that. I've seen that so many times with people applying for jobs with us and all that. They'll apply for a web design position. We'll go to their website, and then we'll find something like, uh, if you guys are familiar with, um, what is it called, Grid Focus, I think is the... Uh, the template we see a lot is that one, and there's a few other ones, just portfolio templates in general. I see a lot of those coming in with resumes and all that. And you kind of at that point are like, well, this isn't what we're, if you can't design your own website kind of thing, you probably can't design a website for our clients. It doesn't mean they can't, I guess. It, doesn't, it just means they, um, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, they didn't put forth the effort on their own work to get the job, to get a job anywhere, to get clients that really reflects uh, what someone is looking for in a designer. So moving on here, what am I doing for time? Excellent. Um, so when designing for WordPress, so of you people here, how many have n are designers and have not designed anything that ended up on WordPress? Anyone? No one? One? Maybe two? So there's a lot of common elements to take into account when designing for WordPress. Um, it's kind of something where you don't want your developers, and as primarily a developer, kind of going against my own, my own kind here, but you don't want to leave your design decisions up to a developer at all, never. Um, which is right there. Um, so there's a lot of things in WordPress that are commonly used that we need to take into account there. Um, so of those things, like common things that come across my desk developing websites is uh, blog post comments or news section, whatever you're calling it on a particular website. The comment section always comes across and it's never designed. And then I go ahead and be like, oh, I'll just do whatever. And by the time the designer goes around and reviews it, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it just, she thinks it looks terrible all the time. And I don't know if that's just me. I don't, maybe I just have a bad mind, idea of what uh, good design is. 
Um, another section commonly overlooked is search results. I get a lot of designs in that don't have the search results page laid out, so I just lay them out like any other page, and there you have it. She doesn't like that either. Uh, contact forms, uh, she doesn't like me taking liberties with that, and media galleries. So those are all things that come across frequently undesigned by the designer and left up to me as the developer, primarily at my job, um, to design. And so yeah, don't leave those things out, please, because your developers are not good designers at all. Um, so designing themes, designing themes for release. So has anyone here designed a theme that they released publicly either on WordPress.com, WordPress.org, or a third-party website? No one? Does anyone want to? Awesome. <laughs> Monica, did you raise your hand? Uh, so one of the things to keep into account there, I know this isn't many of you that this is applying to now, but is to accommodate for everything. Um, WordPress themes, when they get submitted to the uh, WordPress repository, the theme repository, um, there's a lot of things that we check for, I guess. And I'm actually, I probably should have mentioned that beforehand. I am part of the theme approval committee. I don't know what its official title is. But people that submit themes to WordPress for submission and show up on their website go through this extremely kind of scrutinating process uh, that checks against their standards. So one of those things is obviously you need to keep designed for the blog post page, which is your just typical stream of blog posts. Pagination links, those are important and are commonly left out from the ones that have come through. Um, they'll design something and code it and accidentally leave out the next and previous links at the bottom of the blog post page. Uh, the next one here is the static pages, like your about page, contact page, all that jazz. Needs to have the right layout. Uh, single post pages, so the page with the comments and I guess that's all that's different. The full content if you've got experts on the blog post page. Um, then designing the comments, which I mentioned a little earlier, they're also in WordPress to get your theme approved through the WordPress.com or WordPress.org. It needs to account for replies as well to comments, which are threaded, kind of indented replies that associate with a certain comment, which is another commonly overlooked item there. Um, this isn't required to get approval, but an archive page is always nice because everyone wants an archive page on their theme. Uh, the search form and search results is another not um, necessarily a required one, but definitely a benefit to have. Otherwise, it's going to show just like the blog post page. Images. What happens when you click an image? Is it going to be a light box? Is it going to be a different page altogether. Those are things you need to think about. Uh, sidebar elements, so things like your categories, your, what else you guys put in the sidebar? Links, uh, archives in general based on date. And then general HTML elements. Oh wait, I'm a little ahead, aren't I? I'm looking at the wrong one. Where are we? Ah, general HTML elements. Um, so that's things like if you've got a list in a post, like a bulleted list, how is that going to look? Kind of always be thinking of every single thing possible. And that brings us on to developing for WordPress. So how, how many developers again? Do you, any of you developers design? Oh, wow. Okay. So, and if, of that, how many have developed for WordPress? All of you? Awesome. Okay. So, starting out, how many want, actually, let's back it up, how many want to develop and haven't yet for WordPress? Is there anyone here? A couple people? Awesome. Um, so, starting out, I guess I'll target you a few people. Um, the most important thing that got me started in WordPress is the Codex. The Codex is pretty much the WordPress Bible. It explains everything you need to know, almost literally everything. Um, it'll break down. So just looking at one page, for instance, 
we've got the git header function, which pulls essentially your header file, which typically would include the stuff not shown on the page as well as um, like just common elements that show at the top of the page across the whole site. So even something as simple as that, which really has no options at all except for a name, which you'll rarely use, is just really well documented. It states kind of what it is, what it does, and how to use it. And that applies to every single thing that WordPress does um, as far as functions and template tags go. Template tags are things such as um, like calling the post name or calling the post title. Um, so that is found on WordPress.org and is excellent. And I still use it after developing on WordPress for, I guess, since 2005 now. Still use it almost daily, for reference. Um, there we go. Um, theme frameworks. Of you developers, who uses a framework before they get started on WordPress sites? Awesome. So a framework for you that don't use it is, uh, it's basically a starting point, a reference, or it's kind of got the general code, the stuff that you use frequently, such as, I guess, your search bar, your posts, all that, kind of all the database queries and all that in there. Um, and it really speeds up your development process quite a bit. Um, there's quite a few popular frameworks. One is called Hybrid, if any of you have heard of that. Sandbox is another one that's really basic. Um, WP Framework, yet another one. And what I do actually is I make my own, which is really simple. Um, you basically just, if you develop so many websites, you've got the same thing that you include each time over and over and over again. And at some point, you just get tired of including it over and over and over again. So you develop a framework and kind of put it in there. Uh, here we go. Um, the final thing for developing is use the work of others as inspiration, which is basically a, uh, I guess, the politically correct way to say steal. Um, I think I wouldn't be much of a developer at all today if I didn't steal others' work, pretty much. I mean, it's not really stealing. They don't own it. but. Just kind of looking at someone else's code and seeing how they do things and adapting that to your own kind of your own process and the way you do things. So plugin development. Who's done a plugin here? Has anyone developed a plugin? No one? Not even you, David? No? Okay, uh, so plugin development is something that a lot of people I've noticed developer-wise they kind of look at and are a little scared of. Um, but really it's just a simple kind of, it's basically just WordPress development in general. Um, there's a lot of things you can do and it doesn't need to be complex. I think is the one thing that people see a lot is that it is a complex thing. But it's really not like a plugin could be something as simple as pulling the most recent Twitter post from something. And there's a lot of great reasons to use plugins in the sense that they're reusable. You don't have to recode something. You don't have to do anything again. You can just build it and then hit a button and install it. The other thing, theme options pages. Anyone use the theme options page? Yep, a couple people. A lot of themes have it actually now. Um, so it makes a lot of things easier on your users, and I've got an example of what that looks like here, if it works, yep. Um, so that you can put uh, certain things, like a lot of themes will have a header image or you'll be able to upload your logo file here. Um, this particular one, I actually have no idea what it does. It's kind of an example, really. Um, so you can kind of just set different settings in there that apply specifically to your theme as opposed to the, I guess, WordPress as a whole. Um, so this particular thing, there's, you see there's a bunch of different functions there. You can, there's a checkbox, text line, drop down, radio buttons, and then a text area box. And all those things were added here and show up on your website and change settings and all that. And this was all done in less than 200 lines of code which is, if you're a developer, that's nothing. I mean, that's a few, maybe an hour or so of work. 
and that'll let your users, the end user, really work kind of towards um, managing their own website, which as a developer or as someone that works with clients on a regular basis, the user or client in our case, um, editing their website is a huge relief on you. Takes a lot of work away. Um, next thing is theme, uh, don't edit the core code. So developers, who's familiar with filters and all that in WordPress? Awesome. Uh, how many of you have edited the code, the core code before? Before using filters? I know some of you have. I know some of you have. <laughs> there you go. Um, so WordPress, to back it up a little bit, um, WordPress has got all its code, and when you update, all that code is replaced. So 3.3 will be released sometime in 2011, um, which leaves a couple months for that. Um, but if you were to edit something in the core code, which is WordPress's, I guess, what you download, um, when you update that, it would be pretty much overwritten, erased, gone forever kind of deal. So WordPress has this wonderful thing called filters, which actually allow you to place in a different file something that modifies the functionality of WordPress itself. So at the top there, I've got a little dividing line, if you can see that. We've got an excerpt from, what file is that? Formatting.php. So in formatting.php, which is one of the WordPress core files on line 1845, it looks like, uh, there's the function that creates the kind of trailing ellipsis at the end of an excerpt. So you can see right there, it's a bit of code and kind of all jumbled together. Probably doesn't make a lot of sense because you have to go back and figure out what all those other things do there. Um, if you were to edit that, which you can see right up, I can't point, but you can see the little dots. Um, editing that would actually go ahead and be one way to do that, um, but it would be overwritten as soon as WordPress updated the, um, <coughs> excuse me. The alternative is to use the functions.php file, which is a theme file, and go ahead and insert a filter, which is what's on the bottom here. You just pretty much, WordPress has a great reference for all the filters and hooks and all that jazz that um, will tell you what you need to edit for all of those things. So to change the excerpt, for instance, which is line da, 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 1856, looks like we can edit that in a matter of, it looks like five lines, as opposed to changing the core code and get overwritten. And this would continue along throughout updates and over and over again. Alrighty. So developing a theme for release. Has anyone developed a theme that ended up in the WordPress repository for themes? Anything of that nature? Anywhere? Publicly released? No? Okay, the same rules kind of apply as designing for developing. Um, we look at a few things in that group of people that reviews those. Uh, one of those things is code quality. So this means kind of no WordPress error notices, uh, no PHP errors, warnings, or notices and you need to have valid HTML and CSS according to the W3. Um, and also no JavaScript errors. Functionality is another important one. Um, when developing a theme that ends up in the repository, it needs to support uh, proper code implementation, core implementation, sorry, of included functionality. So for instance, if you were designing a theme, or developing rather, a theme that uh, included jQuery or some kind of JavaScript, um, you would need to go ahead and use the one in WordPress as opposed to including your own. So that's kind of the main thing that a lot of the themes that come through fail for, is that they'll include a separate version of jQuery when WordPress itself already includes jQuery in the core code. And so that's one of those things that applies to functionality. Um, Template tags and hooks. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's see here. That's pretty much using kind of just make sure you use the proper tags. Don't use any custom workarounds if it's unnecessary. 
Um, and then WordPress generated CSS classes. So WordPress has a couple functions that'll automatically generate your body uh, tag classes as well as post classes and all that. And All right, that is it, apparently. Um, does anyone have any questions or anything? And I'm going to apologize in advance because I only got three hours of sleep last night because a bunch of sites got hacked, and I'm probably all over the place right now. So ask all your questions, and I'll probably do a better job answering your questions than actually talking because <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what is going on right now. Anyone? Someone's got to have a question. Someone. I'm much better at talking if I don't have to read it. Yeah. Uh, so my general rule is anything over about 20 pages, we'd go ahead and think about other options. We won't necessarily go with another option at that point. But I think we, so for a little background for everyone that hasn't kind of faced this issue before, WordPress really, and I hate to say anything bad about WordPress right now, but WordPress doesn't have a great way of kind of navigating your content in the administration interface. It really only shows, I believe, 10 or 15 pages at a time which makes it kind of difficult to work with kind of page hierarchies and everything like that if it's split across a couple pages. So when you're looking at sites with something like 100 pages or something like that, I often kind of evaluate other options, such as Expression Engine is one that we've used a few times. Drupal is another one we've used once or twice. Joomla we've used not by choice, but used it. Works better for organizing content. Um, so that's kind of like 25 or so is kind of where we make that cutoff point. And I think it's just one of those things where I think I'm hoping WordPress kind of pushes up the way you can navigate your content and kind of get to it. But it hasn't happened yet, and I should probably work on that since it's open source and all that instead of just sit up here and complain about it. But, you know, I'll <laughs> do what I can. Anyone else? Um, well, there's actually a few different ways of going about that. Um, so as far as, so you'd ideally want to keep your content the same on both Facebook as well as WordPress. So what I do with my personal blog, which hasn't been updated in many a month now, is uh, I, I go ahead and I set up through, I believe it's called Twitter feed, oddly enough, even though I use it for Facebook. Um, I set up, uh, it's, a, it's basically an aggregation service. So it takes your content and spits it out to different, like it can go to Twitter and Facebook. What was that? Uh... I'm not familiar with how Hootsuite works, but I haven't seen it used like that. Right. Right, right. And then it... Right, it... it Right, and then you customize kind of how you can say display my title, and then it'll put a link after that, which is what I used to post, you know, however many months ago I last updated output my stuff to Facebook, Twitter. Right, it'll automatically go ahead and generate Facebook. Facebook goes ahead and searches your kind of page and pulls out the first photo and all that. So it's got a pretty good system for kind of sharing your information. You'd probably, it's easier to track people as well on your website, so it's kind of better to send them that way as far as I'm concerned. Different people have different opinions and
Right, yeah, it's easy to find for sure. Yeah. Anyone else? Ben? Oh, another one. Facebook does have a developer page. It does. I'm not sure exactly what. Um, the developer stuff on the Facebook developer page is more so geared towards um, developing apps from what I've seen. Now, it does cover also, Facebook has its own set of kind of meta tags that you can go ahead and put in your website that'll, like say for instance, you wanted the title to show differently on Facebook than it does on your website, like the title in your browser or whatever. Um, it's got its own special set of tags that'll go ahead and populate that differently if you want that. You can set the image to be a different image than the first one that comes up and the content to even be different at that point. I honestly have not used an actual pre-designed theme in quite some time, but I believe... <laughs> I, my skirt has been blown up many times. Um, but by a WordPress theme, yes. Uh, like, I think I mentioned it before. I believe it's called Grid Focus. Is that correct? Does anyone know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great theme, and I used to use a modified version of that. Um, and it's just, it's got a lot of options. I believe you can choose how many columns and all that in there. So the theme options are there that I kind of mentioned earlier. And you can go ahead and just kind of change the layout a lot. And it's just a really well-designed, kind of simple, basic, but still looks good kind of theme. And so that's, I think the last one I touched was GERD Focus, and I loved it. And still do to this day, even though I don't use it. Anyone else? Yes. I am not familiar with Weebly. But uh, developing a WordPress is basically just, for the most part, it's straight uh, HTML and CSS. So you're just basically coding. I do it kind of just in a text editor. I don't even have a graphical interface up. Um, but all the if you're using a framework, at least, most of the PHP or MySQL or any of that additional kind of more programming type code is already in there for you. So I mean, you could basically adapt in kind of anything, even like Dreamweaver or something like that. You could just design something and then just go ahead and cut and paste stuff in where it belongs, if that helps at all. Yes, e-commerce. I would never, ever do e-commerce on a WordPress site. We had one client kind of bring an e-commerce site on WordPress to us. And there are some plugins that look great when you're looking at them. But when you go in and you start trying to modify things and you start trying to get the e-commerce plugin to work with other plugins, everything just seems to break left and right and it goes out the door. And we've tried multiple different ones on that website and have yet to have any success with that. So the way we get around that, which is kind of odd, is uh, I don't really use any pre-developed plugins. I don't really download anything. Kind of just do them all myself. That way, if they break, it's on me is the way I look at it. It's my problem to fix. Um, whereas if you're using someone else's plugin um, and an update breaks it, you have to go back, learn all that code over and over. And this applies to us, I guess, because we put out so many websites on you know, and I think right now we're averaging like one every three weeks. Um, but if you're doing, I guess, a, just a couple websites, I'd still use plugins. Most of them keep it up to date. It's kind of one of the, I think the plugin repository has the same rules as the uh, theme repository in which you have to keep it updated and current with the current um, version of WordPress. It needs to work at all times. So if you're downloading something from the plugin repository, 
it should be, I've seen a couple of them not kind of with the upgrades work instantly, but soon after they update it. Um, now the conflicts on the other hand between two plugins is something that I just, to me I don't really see a way to solve that. You kind of have to go around, and that's why I do a lot of it myself because most of the conflicts come through some type of JavaScript, whether it be jQuery, Ajax, JSON, whatever. That's kind of where they all bump into each other and don't work because they're trying to use the same, I guess the same, either the same variables or the same calls to make things work and they just bump up against each other and are like, well, neither of us are going to do anything. So then they stop working all together. If that helps at all. <laughs> I really, that's one plugin we actually use on almost every site is for forms because I'm too lazy to code all that by hand. Um, and Gravity Forms is the one we use. Um, I believe it's a paid plugin. Um, however, it's definitely worth it. And it actually, the good thing I like about Gravity Forms for developers out there is you can go ahead and um, edit it in the same way that WordPress is edited. So the hooks and filters I was talking about earlier, it incorporates into that, and all the updates are made in your functions.php file, so it doesn't, upgrades don't overwrite your work. So I don't use Dreamweaver or any graphical, I use Coda, uh, which is Mac only, I believe. Um, um, and I don't actually integrate WordPress. So the way I approach a WordPress development project is typically I'll code out the different page types ahead of time by hand, and they'll just be like flat HTML pages, and then I'll go and just cut and paste chunks into where they belong in WordPress. So I kind of start with just a basic HTML site and then put the content management aspect into it. Uh, we refuse to use Flash, um, which this is a whole nother talk altogether. I could probably ramble on about this one for an hour. Um, we stopped using Flash because it, um, I guess it's just not very, it's a proprietary kind of, I guess, media type. And it doesn't get along like Apple stopped on the iPad and iPhone. There's no Flash. I think actually, did they just recently do Flash on the iPhone or something? Saw Flash on something recently. Right. Yeah. There's, so there's a couple workarounds. But so we avoided we avoid Flash and actually not avoid, but it's a policy that we won't do anything in Flash um, just because of that. And so you'll end up designing a website. You'll put a Flash piece in there, and then they'll be like, well, I can't see this on my iPad. And you're like, well, you asked for Flash. You should have known. And then, but they don't really know that. Um, but does it work well with WordPress? I mean, it could. I mean, it's definitely something you can include. Um, there'd be a lot of kind of, you'd have to, are you speaking more towards editing the content through WordPress for the Flash piece, or... It really all depends on how it works. There is, um, so one way to interact with Flash through WordPress that I could see happening is Flash can be populated through either a plain text document or like an XML kind of file. Um, so I could see those working. Unfortunately, I haven't worked with any of the Flash kind of related plugins or anything of that nature, so I'm not actually sure how that would work. Although if you want to send a link to me or something later, I can go ahead and take a look at it. Anyone out there? Yeah. Okay, mobile development. Um, let's see, I feel like these are all related to my company now. Um, 
Mobile development, we actually go ahead and build a completely separate site typically, which some people do things one way, we do it that way. Um, responsive design has been big lately, um, which will go ahead and just turn your full website into a mobile kind of friendly website. But I personally am of the belief that all that should be on a mobile website is what you need. Otherwise, you can just view the full website. So for instance, we've got one of our clients is a high-end salon. On their full website, they've got their homepage, a staff page that lists all the staff members, has bios, products, stuff like that, um, all the way down, services, all that. All we have on the mobile website is, I think, just what they are, where they're located, make a reservation, and what services they offer, because that's all you really want to know on your phone. Um, there are people out there, and it's kind of weird talking to a bunch of like kind of technologically savvy people about this, but most people aren't and don't typically browse the internet on their phone. So kind of putting forth, and this is just my opinion, putting forth just the basics is kind of what a mobile website should be to me as far as I'm concerned, and my coworkers would probably disagree with me half the time, but that's what that is. Anyone else? We got one more. So Genesis and Thesis are uh, definitely two awesome frameworks. Um, Thesis, however, ran into some issues probably about a year ago where, so WordPress requires all themes, they were removed from the theme repository basically, because WordPress requires, part of their requirements for being in the theme repository is that you have a GPL um, license. So it's completely open source, everything. Um, thesis does not have that, so they were removed because to them it's sorry, proprietary software. Um, but those are definitely excellent. I personally don't like Thesis because it's got a lot of extra kind of stuff that you don't need, but that's coming from a developer. So if you're not a developer, Thesis might be great for you. Um, Genesis I actually haven't worked with before, so I couldn't really speak to that, but I know I've heard a lot of great things about it. Has anyone here worked with Genesis and give some input on that, Ben? So is Genesis, like Thesis, mostly done through the administration panel? Or? All right. All right. Awesome. And I think that's all the time we have. Yes. And I apologize again for my lack of sleep and my server problems I was dealing with all night last night. And I, my presentation itself was probably just boring. But I hope you got something at least out of the q and I should have done that the whole time. But yeah, thank you.